Public health is a field dedicated to protecting and improving the health of all people. For too long, women have been underrepresented in leadership positions within the health sector. But that is all about to change. The Women in Leadership Project, a collaboration between the African Population and Health Research Center, Global Health 5050 UK, and the International Center for Research on Women, India, is breaking down barriers and empowering women to take their rightful place at the wheel. You know, uh, we've been hearing a lot about how um, within the health sector, a lot of the work is being done by grassroots women, but there are very few in leadership positions. So we wanted to understand what is it and why is it that women are not in leadership positions. From a lack of mentorship to unconscious bias, women face hurdles in attaining leadership roles in the health sector. So I think there's probably barriers and challenges at several levels, um, including the lack of legal protection, um, the lack of organisational policies, but also at the level of what happens in their homes, um, what happens in the domestic sphere. So all of the evidence that we have shows that women have pretty good equality in the workplace in many countries, up until the point at which they have children. And once they have children, their ability to progress their careers in the workplace really declines. So for me, one of the biggest challenges that we need to address is the lack of equality in the domestic sphere. But progress is being made. Organizations like Global Health 5050 are implementing strategies to bridge the gap. So the entire purpose of Global Health 5050 is really about promoting equality of opportunity for everybody working inside global health organizations, as well as equality of opportunity for people benefiting from the activities of those organizations. So we're an accountability and monitoring tool mechanism that provides data that people inside organizations can use to push for change, to push for change towards equality and social justice inside their organizations and in terms of what their organizations deliver. Through in-depth research and insightful interviews, the Women in Leadership Project is shedding light on these obstacles. You know, uh, while I can speak about specific barriers and enablers in the health sector, Hearing from women from different sectors, we've learned that some of these barriers and enablers are common across sectors. So it's not just about the health sector. So if you talk about some key barriers, I think we have to talk about organizational culture. How masculine are these spaces, right? Are, are there spaces where women are heard? Uh, firstly, are there spaces where women are hired? What are the biases at the hiring level? Are these spaces that understand women's lived realities? The fact that women, when they get married, are expected to provide care work, right? Women, when they have children, have to provide care work. Women, when they have elderly parents, have to provide care work. Do organizations account for that? Many organizations don't. So that's why a lot of women fall off the career trajectory during that time. Male allies play a crucial role in creating a more inclusive environment by actively challenging bias, amplifying marginalized voices, and promoting equal opportunities for everyone. We can make different arguments. We can make the arguments of uh, right-based gender justice that men and women are equal by all means. We can make the argument of the impact that having women in leadership in the health sector has on the health outcomes of both women, even men, but also children. We can make the instru instrumentalist argument of the efficiencies that are having a diverse leadership to the institutions bring. We can also make the argument for global commitments uh, that we as, an, as a country and also our institutions commit to. But in order to achieve really what we are looking out for, in order to promote women leadership, uh, especially in the health sector where a majority are women, but then the leadership is uh, mostly men, we need to help both men and women in the conversation. By empowering women and fostering a supportive environment, we can achieve greater representation and influence of women leaders in public health.
So you'll notice that I'm the co-CEO and co-founder of Global Health 5050. And in full transparency, since we're about transparency, um, the other co-founder and co-CEO is my husband. So I obviously think that it requires everybody to get on board if what you want is gender equality. In my dreams, what I'm looking for is people who are feminist leaders, people who are motivated by social justice for everybody, not just by a desire to get to the top. The findings of this research are clear. Investing in women's leadership in health is not just the right thing to do, it's essential for a stronger, more effective health system. Join APHRC, Global Health 5050, and ICRW in championing women's leadership in health. Together, we can build a healthier future for all.